Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, this is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Welcome to another edition of Mets Musings. I'm Gary Mack, and I am really excited this week because not only is it the Subway Series, Game 1 is in the books, Mets took it in an exciting game, but I have a very special guest for you to see and to talk to and listen to this week, and he is nine-year-old Jonathan. He is my great-nephew, and Jonathan, welcome to Mets Musings. Hello. <laughs> Jonathan did a submission uh, to the sportscast, SNY sportscast contest, but it was, uh, what was it? They were filled up already, Jonathan? Uh, well, my mom couldn't get the link to get it on, so I couldn't get on. Ah, okay. Well, maybe next year, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, Jonathan is a big Mets fan, as you can see, with all the memorabilia and things he's got behind him. So, Jonathan, let's start off and say, who was your favorite Met player? I really like Pete Alonso. You like the home run hitting, right? Yeah. <laughs> and and who would be after Pete Alonso? Um, I got to go with um, Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil. Good, two good choices. Both were all-stars this year, so you really picked some good good guys there to, to uh, watch and emulate. And, uh, you know, uh, practice what they do. It's all about practice. And are you playing ball this year? Yeah. Well, I was on the Yankees this year. So, um, but... We were we went to uh, we got all the way to the championship matchups, and we won the championship seventeen to six. Yeah. So we 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 crushed the championship matchup and um, we won the series. So that was fun. Oh, all right. And what position do you play? I really like pitcher and first base. Okay, so that's where Pete Alonso comes in, right? Yeah. First base all right and did you enjoy the uh the game last night with the yankees oh yeah that was fun uh i went from the top of the first to the bottom of the fifth and top of the first starting Marte's home run people on his rbi and um escobar's two run a homer really made me excited about that game yeah and and i thought myself that it was going to be uh um you know uh, uh, a slugfest game i thought it was going to be a lot more scoring but then the pitchers seemed to settle down and and started getting the batters out of there yeah those two home runs in the first um i really thought they were um they were the the win- the winning two runs but then they came back and i was like that was a good hits right there. Yeah, and that's the key, you know. When when somebody scores against you, you got to come back, and when you score, that, you got to hold the other team. That's what the Mets always do. They go down, yeah. they come right back up. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, though it was a tough weekend against San Diego, they're a tough team. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they won the they won the last game though. That's right. That that three-run homer by Pete really helped the Mets get in front. Yep, they certainly did. And uh, now we're on to the second half. Atlanta is breathing down on next, but, um, 
you know, big series coming up with Atlanta. A couple of series I think they're going to be playing. I don't have my schedule here. I think, uh, they, have like, I think they have like 12 more games with Atlanta. And those games are going to be important. They will. Because if the Mets don't stay in front, then Atlanta is going to be first place. That's right. But I think the Mets will, will either stay. Well, I, I think they'll be up there for the wild card. What do you think about that? I think they're going to be up there for a while, too. Because yeah. what normally happens, though, is they like they win the first game of the series and then they lose the second one, but then they come right back and win the last game and they win the series most of the time. Yeah, that seems to be the trend. And they've been winning uh, most of the series this year so far. I think they've only lost, uh, like, what, well, two lost series? One or two? Well, no, because they lost to the Mariners, the Padres. Um, yeah, but they've been doing pretty good uh, this year. Yeah, I think that's it. The, I forgot about the Mariners. That's right. They did. Well... Now, we have the trade deadline coming up. And I know everybody hates to talk about the trade deadline because you're always afraid that one of your favorite players is going to get traded. And uh, uh, Jeff McNeil's name has popped up in some trades. But um, what do you think the Mets need to do in the trade deadline, before the trade deadline? Well, I think if they were – trade anyone I actually I don't really know if they would actually trade anyone because they got a really good team going right now so this team might lead them to the World Series but if they trade anyone like if they never had Starling Marte they would never would have had that lead off home run so right and he's having a real good year too. I don't think he'll be traded, but they do need yeah, some. No. They do need a relief pitcher, and another relief pitcher, and uh, uh, maybe another bat in the lineup. And you know that costs uh, uh, something. You have to make a move, maybe a minor league guy or something. But uh, I need to. I think they need to. Uh, pick somebody up like that, though Trevor May will be coming back, so maybe he can help the bullpen. DeGrom will be coming back, too. Right, so. and that'll be a big boost if he's healthy. The whole thing is him and uh, Max Scherzer got to stay healthy the rest of the season, right? Well, Max Scherzer, is, he's doing good this year, right now. He's good. He's something to watch, right? Yeah. I mean, he is really he he's when he's pitching, he's really into the game. You can see that in his face and everything. So, uh, and uh, I think Degrom is pitching tonight a simulated game. So, what do you think? You think he'll be come out okay and and be back next week? Well, normally when um, Degrom pitches, he gets he gets those K's. And when he gets those K's, those K's lead to wins. And the wins lead to um, better games. So, that right. really yeah. helps them. Uh, that's that's right. So he'll be a big, big. Bo It'll be almost like trading to get a a, a, a starting pitcher. You know, uh, when he comes back. Mm-hmm. And what are you? What will you be looking for out of the Mets the rest of the season? You think uh, are you going to be? Uh, they're going to keep winning at the same pace, or uh, will it be a little slump? They they haven't had a really big slump this year, which is great. That's the way you win championships, of course. Um, you know, maybe uh, what was the longest losing streak they've had so far? I don't think it's been more than, what, three games? I think it's been like four, three games. Yeah, yeah, not not too bad. So, 
Um, you think they'll be able to keep that pace up the rest of the season? I think so. I okay. Think they, I think if they get into the wild card, they're gonna. I think they're they're they might do some good stuff. Yeah. And any interest in the the draft that just passed? There, yeah, they they signed a uh, or they selected a catcher and a high school shortstop. Uh, you you follow that at all? I looked on. I was looking on the draft a little bit, but most of the times, I'm not. I don't really watch the draft, but I um, I in very much. Like I will watch the games if they're on. I will watch the recaps every day. Uh huh. But yeah, I know it's a tough. It it's tough with the draft because it's not like football where you there's so much college football around and you see all these players in college and everything, right? Uh, baseball mm-hmm. isn't like that. You know they they uh, they do select college players. The Mets did select a, a catcher. Kevin Parada from Georgia Tech and uh, shortstop out of high school, Jet Williams. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a tough thing to draft with with baseball. It's really it's even tough on a team because it's really they're taking a chance and they're, they're thinking you know some some high school kid at eighteen is gonna is gonna pan out. But um, uh, you know it's it's. It's a tough call, you know. Uh, I like to look at it so, because I like to follow the minor leagues a little bit, like the Cyclones and and like I that. Think, so, I think Conforto played for the Cyclones at one time. A lot of guys play with Alonzo. Play with this. I saw Alonzo play in Brooklyn when he was with the Cyclones. Uh, Nimmo played with the Cyclones. Nito played. Uh, Galermi. A lot of the guys have come through Brooklyn, and uh, and that's the fun. Like you said, Conforto played there. I saw him play, and that's the fun to see them when they first start, and then when they get to the majors. You know, that's a lot of fun. In fact, I I interviewed Pete Alonso when he was in the minor leagues, um, uh, wow. a while back. So. Uh, I'll send you the link to that if you want to listen to that uh, interview. But, uh, yeah, that was a while ago. Now I can't get him. <laughs> now he's a major leaguer. Now you don't want to talk. But uh, that's okay. Um, you know, we, 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 we had our conversation. So, And I was one of the first ones to do the interview. So we'll keep that between us, though. <laughs> So you're out for the summer, out for school. Uh, what are you doing with yourself? Well, um, we've been camping a lot this year. And, uh, yeah, most of the time I'm camping. Um, I just pick up my mom's phone and ask Siri, hey, what's the score of the Mets? <laughs> and uh, right before bed, I always ask that. And if they're losing, I'm just like, Nah, but if they're winning, I get I get excited. I get ex- <laughs> and how did you become a Mets fan? Well, my dad was a Mets fan, so I just like went along with with when my dad was a Mets fan. So now, like our whole family is a Mets fan. All right, and now you developed your own passion for the Mets, right? And it is a passion; it really is, and it's a passion for the game of baseball as well uh, that you develop. And uh, uh, again, uh, you got a nice setup there. You got your jersey going, and uh, so what do you want to do? Do you want to continue playing baseball? And uh, uh, what about broadcasting? I think I wanted I wanted to like play for the I wanted to play baseball and then I wanted to go to be like um, an umpire oh. and then I wanted to try and be like an SN broadcast. All right, yeah. that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So maybe you will. 
Maybe, maybe you'll take over for me at Mets Musings when I quit. <laughs> I remember a couple of years ago when we were in the studio. Remember that? The other studio. Oh, yeah. I haven't, <laughs> been, here in, I haven't been to your house in a long time. I, I know. It's been I, a few years I, with the pandemic, but uh, yeah. we'll have to get together soon. Yeah. So are you looking forward to the rest of the season and, and the Mets winning? Yeah. I'm every time the Mets win, I like count how much wins they get in a row. But if they don't win, like for like three games in a row, I start counting how many games they lost in a row. Right, right, right. All right. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on today and talking with me and, uh, I hope we get to see each other real soon and good luck with your, uh, you know, whatever you do the rest of the summer, have fun and good luck in school when you go back and hopefully we'll see you soon. And thanks again for coming on Mets Musings. Thank you. All right. And I will be back with the farm report right after this. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a Ph.D. in life through baseball? Welcome to Baseball Ph.D., a tour company for your brain. 30 major league teams, 100 places to see. Let's touch them all as we make the road trip of a lifetime. Check out my Facebook group. It's at Facebook dot com slash Mets Musings. Go check it out and don't forget to call the hotline. It's 516-619-6341. And we're back and we are gonna go down on the farm. <laughs> And on the farm this week, well, let's look at the standings and see how the Mets farm teams are doing. We've got Syracuse on the season. They are 42 and 52, 10 games back, and they are currently in ninth place. Binghamton, now Binghamton and the lower double A and down have a split season. And so they're giving their results now as of the second half standings. They are 6-15, and 15, eight games back in last place. Really not much changed in the first part of the season, but it is the second half. Uh, the Brooklyn Cyclones are 14-11, and 11, one and a half games back. They are tied for second in their division. St. Lucie, 13-12. and 12. One game back, and they are tied. Uh, they are in second place all by their lonesome. So um, the minor leagues are kind of rolling along the same way they did in the first half, but um, uh, Brooklyn's off to a pretty good start in the second half, but we'll see how that ends up. As far as the players, Vientos and Batty and uh, Maurizio continue to hit, as well as Alvarez, who struggled a little bit going to Syracuse. Uh, but it's an adjustment period. He's 20 years old. He's playing against guys that are 27, 28, 29 years old, you know. Uh, so it, it is an adjustment period. And that we still hear rumors that the possibility exists he may be called up to the Mets, but we will have to see. Uh, 
could be, a, a, you know, it's a tricky move to call up a guy that young, and you don't want to rush him. You don't want to hurt his psyche or anything. If you bring him up too soon, could be a problem. You never know, but we'll see how that plays. Uh, of course, his name, as well as Batty and Vientos and uh, Maurizio and some of the younger pitches they have at the Cyclones and uh, Binghamton and uh, St. Lucie, their names are going to come up the next couple of weeks big time. We're going to hear a lot of names uh, thrown around. Jeff McNeil, we're going to probably hear. J.D. Davis, probably, uh, maybe Dom Smith. I doubt it. He's on the injured list, and he's not going to have enough time to get off the list and, and prove so. Maybe a team will take a chance on a guy like that, though. Go by his track record. Uh, even though he's not been hitting, doesn't affect the fielding. He's still a, a terrific first baseman, so maybe somebody will be looking in that direction. Who knows? They Maybe they want to tighten up the defense. They have enough offense. Um, maybe a team like Philadelphia could be interested in somebody like Smith. Uh, they could use a little tightening up of their defense, but... But they've got first base filled, and you know, um, so we'll have to see how it all shakes out. How creative the Mets get. Personally, I think they need another relief pitcher, and probably another bat, a right-handed hitting bat. They've agreed, you know, uh, the acquisition of Vogelberg hope helps the designated hitter part from the left side, and it pretty much forces uh, Dominic Smith to either the minor leagues or, as I said, in a trade out the door Uh, because they will no longer need that. But we'll see how that all shakes out. And uh, that's coming up. Deadline of uh, uh, the trading deadline coming up faster than you realize. So we'll see how it all shakes out. It's exciting time. All right, so the Mets got another game with the Yankees tonight. Then they're off, and then they they are off to Miami, I believe, for a uh, the weekend, and uh, that'll bring us back uh, to next week and a big series with Atlanta coming up pretty soon. So uh, things are tightening up, as my young friend Jonathan said. They've got like 12 games left with Atlanta. Plenty of games against Atlanta. It's going to be tight. Going to be tough. But uh, stick with me. Stick here with Mets Musings and you'll find out all the information. Okay. So I want to thank my guest, Jonathan, uh, my great nephew there, for, for taking the time out to come on the show and talk some Mets baseball. I also want to thank you for listening and watching. And I hope that you like the show and you will subscribe to the show and hit that like button on YouTube. That helps the analytic people at YouTube see who's watching. And it also helps you because you'll know whenever a new show is released and you can do the same on Apple podcasts or Google play. Oh, wherever you watch or listen to Mets musings, just hit that subscribe button. So let's grow the show and get new listeners. So, until the next time, remember, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. And I will see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings.